Tonight's talk is going to be called, Let's Be Honest. Feels like the entire world is on fire right now. Emotionally, psychologically, uh, symbolically, and in some places, literally. Um, that feeling is closer to home now, given the strife that's <clears throat> that's rippling throughout the United States. And yet, this is some. This is a state that um, is universal throughout the entire world. Human beings, despite their ability to transcend boundaries through social media, tend to live in their own little mental bubble, and don't like to um, necessarily open themselves up to this universal suffering, which is going on all around the world. Over the past week, obviously our country has been torn for or, or by a, div uh, a variety of factions and beliefs. And what's startling to me personally is how many people I know are either outright or closeted racists. And, and you don't realize that until you start to, to read the, and understand the coding of language when people post things and you realize that there's a subtext there and they may not necessarily be, be aware of it i think many americans would 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 pass a polygraph test if asked if they're racist they would say no and they really believe it but that doesn't change the fact that they may support behaviors institutions practices that alienate other people. So much of our practice as a contemplative, um, contemplative meditative practice is about confronting those aspects of ourselves that we normally relegate to the shadows. And as we sit, those aspects of ourselves percolate to the surface or can percolate and they take a variety of different forms the emotions that accompany these sides of ourselves that, that we don't like to face can range from fear alienation anger rage grief, sorrow, and we become acutely aware of those three poisons that the Buddha identified, which are greed, hatred, and ignorance. The more we investigate our internal landscape, I think we see more and more those three faces of greed, hatred, and ignorance. And if we're honest about it, we, we, we don't always like what we see because our practice reveals to us all of those tender spots, the bruises, the emotional hurts and sorrows that we ordinarily are so adept at concealing or covering up or anesthetizing with shopping and other distractions. So, so Zen practice, Buddhist practice is not, it's not a fun thing, far from it. It's painful in the same way as if you've ever hurt yourself and you've covered your wound with a bandage. When you're removing that bandage, the gauze, and you feel it tugging on the healing skin, the pain, that smart, 
is akin to what I think practice exposes and offers us. It can be extremely convalescing and rewarding, and yet at other times it could be as discomforting as surgery with no anesthesia because we're facing those parts of ourselves that we don't want to see. Our own prejudices, our own vices, our shortcomings, our weaknesses. And they hurt. Just today, when I arrived late, I had a whole narrative in my head of all the reasons why. And I, then I sat for 15 minutes with you. And off it goes, sputtering. The self-incrimination, the blame-placing, indignation. We're so good at concocting stories. And we believe those stories. And that's the, can be one of the most foul intoxicants that there is. Johnson and I met on, on Sunday and he asked me a very trivial question. The same thing we asked one another all the time. He said, hey, how are you? And I answered casually, I'm doing well. How are you? And we went along with our conversation. And then the profundity of the, of the, of the question resonated in me. And I looked out at the world and all the pain and torment and strife that's going on. And I asked myself, how could I answer? I'm fine. How could I be fine in the midst of all this? Someone who's not separated from it. So much of our practice is not just uncovering our own pain and suffering, but opening ourselves up to other, the suffering of others. We call that compassion or empathy. But that, that grief, that suffering can be overwhelming especially the closer you are to it, it magnifies. And here we are as a nation gripped in something that's so hostile, so visceral, so primal that it leaves me mute. So how could we, how can one be well? Our practice dissolves through careful scrutiny, intense scrutiny, repeated scrutiny, this notion of the self is a discrete, separate thing from the rest of the world. How can an I be fine or well when you're sitting inside of a field that's on fire? Your body may remain unscathed, but those around you are tortured by the fire. So where does that leave us as practitioners? One of the greatest tools I think that Buddhism reveals is our ability to empathize and cultivate compassion. The Dalai Lama I think is one of the most magnificent examples of a spiritual practitioner, not because he's a Buddhist or not because he's accomplished in any special way, although I'm sure he may be, but because what he consistently teaches is compassion. Not only for those who look like you, but for all beings, because all beings suffer. And it's that pulse the rever reverberation of our humanity as we're exposed to the rawness of, of suffering that connects us to all other beings. Human beings, animal beings, insects. But the first step I believe, is as we sit and we accept with as much tenderness and openness and non-judgment as possible, that which arises. And we could call that honesty. 
and honesty that is often uncomfortable. But from where I sit today seems to be the salve that we as a people, Americans, human beings, earthlings, need. We need to accept who we are before we can ever hope to transform ourselves. And that means op opening ourselves fully to those three poisons, greed, hatred, and ignorance before they engulf us. Thank you.